Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer On webinar, How to Turn Your Data into Dollars. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. Today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. For anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO, the absolute best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the brand new Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. We're so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that DealerOn is still the only company brave enough in the industry to offer a money-back lead guarantee program. Does your website company guarantee you a 50% lift in leads or your money back? Well, maybe you should check us out at our gorgeous brand new DealerOn website at DealerOn.com. And we have an incredible show in store for you today. We're so very pleased to have two amazing presenters today. First, Denise Chuddy is co-founder and CEO at LotLinks, a fast-growing tech company that enables dealerships to gain higher sales velocity and lower cost per sale. Lot Links Deep Linking drives VIN, <laughs> drives VIN tenders directly to dealer VDPs, creating a more fulfilling car shopping process. Denise previously held executive positions at The Weather Channel, Tremor Video, Cars.com, and Google. She launched Google's automotive team when auto marketers were unfamiliar with search marketing. Denise led Google's consumer packaged goods team, where her work with Procter & Gamble was featured in the Wall Street Journal. Denise gets lectures at the University of Illinois, where she received a BS in advertising. She also holds an MBA from the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. Denise is a frequent guest lecturer on digital marketing, and she can be reached at Denise at lotlinks.com. Joining Denise Chetty today is... Dave Sponicky, the president and founder of Reunion Marketing, a full-service digital marketing agency specializing in delivering best-in-industry solutions to automotive dealerships across the country. Dave spent 10 years working with a 33-store dealership group in North Carolina. While there, he created digital strategies that increased website traffic and lead volume by more than 400%, contributing towards sales growth that outpaced the local market by approximately 600% the last three years he was there. He continues to utilize the same data-driven strategies based on in-market shopping behavior and search trends to create the same success for his partners at Reunion Marketing. Dave can be reached at dave at reunionmarketing.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we're going to try to respond to you by email later today. Also, don't forget a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. And please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Oh, and I've been excited to tell you about this. Guess what? Our good friends at Lot Links and Reunion Marketing are giving away an awesome prize today on the webinar. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a three-month Lot Links campaign that is going to bring you a fresh 1,500 shoppers directly to your dealership website VDPs. You are going to walk away also with a $100 Amazon gift card to boot. Let me just tell you, this prize is valued at just over $6 thousand dollars. It's a tremendous prize for you and for your dealership. You have to be on the live broadcast to win it though. So stay tuned. You could be the one winning this amazing prize today. And by the way, everyone on today's broadcast is already a winner. All of you attendees are going to be winning a free Vinvertising dashboard for you to add into your Google Analytics. So you have all of your most important data right at your fingertips. It's the industry's first of its kind and you are going to find it invaluable. At the end of the show, we're going to give you instructions on how you can download this revolutionary new tool that is certain to be a game changer, so definitely stay tuned. Also, at the conclusion of the webinar, you're going to receive a short survey. Fill it out, because we're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. Today, we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all those completed surveys to also win some Google prizes. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's presentation, so please tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio. You can also hit up Denise Chuddy at LotLinks and David Sponicky at Reunion Marketing. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. 
Come on, let's get started. Let's learn how to turn your data into dollars. Denise, it's been a year almost since I've had you on my show. Thank you so much for coming back. Thanks for having me. We should do this more often. I absolutely agree. Let's do that. And Dave Sponicky, it's your very first time doing a Dealer On webinar. Thank you so much for being here today. We're so looking forward to seeing what you have to say. Yeah, I'm really excited to share. I'm excited too. Now, we all just got back from Digital Dealer and it was a really, really great show and I'm so glad I got to see you guys out there. And I am really excited about this topic because there's a lot of people out there, you know, dealerships. They are drowning in just a plethora of data. And I feel like dealerships sometimes don't know what to do with all that data, or maybe they're misusing it or just not using it to its full advantage, which I think is probably more often what is happening. So I'm so excited because now you're telling me we can actually take some of that data and make more money with it. <laughs> Heck yeah. Where do we begin? Now I got a sneak peek at your, your slide deck. It is chock full of great information. So I know we have a lot to get to. So uh, Denise, I believe you're starting off the show. Please take it away. Where do we begin? All right. Dave, you mind transitioning? Let's talk about some of the objectives here. So what Dave and I have prepared today is we want to, as a group, align on the truths in automotive digital marketing. So what are the things we know about the state of the state that um, we, we can agree on? And equally as important, what are the things we have yet to learn? There's certainly a lot of signals and core foundations of our business, but with how fast the digital platforms evolve and consumer habits change, there are a lot of things we have yet to learn. So with that, we'll then transition into Dave's section where he'll talk about data within your own analytics to help you on that journey of things to learn about the consumer path and how they engage on your site. And then we'll wrap it up with the industry's first Google Analytics Vinvertising dashboard. We've created a simple tool that you can easily plug and play into your own analytics and dynamically populate core data from analytics so that at a daily level you have a tool set to look at. You have a set of concrete KPIs to consistently analyze. You can email those metrics to you and again simplify all the things that are within Google Analytics to nine core metrics to guide your, your decisions. Mm -hmm. And then finally we'll wrap it up into Q&A. That's right and audience if you have a question for either Denise or Dave, please don't hesitate to write those questions in. We are going to be saving them for the Q&A session, but we'd love to get them all wrapped up. And if you also want to let me know which presenter you want me to pose that question to, we can do that as well. Where do we begin? All right, let's go to the next slide oh. with the poll question. Poll question. All right, audience, we have three poll questions for you today. And the first one is on the screen now. We'd love it if you'd get involved and let us know what's happening at your dealership. The question is, what percent of your media budget is allocated to driving car shoppers to your dealership website? Your website, not somebody else's website, not cars.com or auto trader, any, your dealership website, okay? Please select one of the following answers. Under 25%, somewhere between 25 and 50%, Somewhere between 50 and 75 percent, over 75 percent, or let's be honest, you have no idea. <laughs> okay, once we get a majority of those in, we're going to close the poll and share the results. What percent of your media budget is allocated to driving car shoppers to your dealership website? Under 25 percent, between 25 and 50, between 50 and 75 percent, over 75 percent, or ah, got no idea. Once we get a majority of votes in, we're going to close the poll and share the results. And <laughs> we're already getting questions in. <laughs> we're already getting questions in from the audience. I love this. All right. Thank you, audience. Keep them coming. Um, we're going to leave the poll open for just another couple seconds. The votes are still coming in, and we do appreciate it. And Denise and Dave, if you're ready, I will close the poll and share the results. All right, we're ready. All right, here we go. Share. Okay, 16% of today's audience say that, uh, alas, only under 25% of their media budget is driving car shoppers to the dealership website. 
30%, so almost a third, say it's more like between 25 and 50%. The majority of 32% of today's audience say that they spend between 50% and 75% of their media budget sending car shoppers to their dealership website. 11% of today's dealers say that they spend over 75% of their media budget doing it. And then the remaining 11%, well, they admit they really have no idea how much of their media budget is actually headed towards driving car shoppers to their dealership website. Denise, does that help you out? That sure does. Thanks for framing that out. So as we continue, we will understand how people look at their media allocation. Should we head into the content now? Absolutely. Does that work for you? Great. So Dave and I want to start again setting the stage on what we know. Reason being is um, once we start talking about the things we want, want to discover as an industry, I think when Dave presents the dashboard we've created, uh, it'll make a lot more sense as to why we've made some choices in terms of what we consider core KPIs for car shoppers. So first of all, the things we know, and I'll go through these next few slides. First and foremost, we realize most car shoppers aren't sending e-leads, right? So that used to be our primary signal for knowing that somebody was interested and that there was a propensity to buy. So because of that, uh, we really want to make sure that we, we look at other signals that we get from car shoppers. The second thing is we know that more, and it was great to see that that poll at good 60% were in the middle there of, uh, you know, of the, the pack of really thinking about how to attract more shoppers to their own sites. And that we also know shoppers shop around, right? We know that the, the patterns we used to see of shoppers going to a few core sites and us being able to capture them uh, has, has really changed in now it's a very fragmented world. And then the final thing is VinViews move cars off the lot. There's been a lot of industry knowledge out there about that. And so that'll be one of the signals that we're going to weave into the dashboard that you'll see on how do we understand that somebody is close to buying a car and, and exhibited some sort of interest or signal. So on the next slide, and excuse me, I think somebody might be typing in the background. Maybe it's Eliana or Dave. I hear some typing. I don't know if that's distracting to other folks on the phone. So, thank you. So, um, here the first thing we want to talk about, again to set the stage. Is it used to be we could we could look at our e-leads and we would understand what our sales would look like, right? And it was a great signal for us to know that we were going to have a good month or we needed to do more to boost, it, you know, to get a better month. But because the majority of people are no longer giving us those signals, we need to look to new. New, new ways. And in these two studies, one is a Dadium study and the second is a Cobalt study, they both came to the same conclusion that when a visitor goes to an automotive website, on the left hand side, Dadium is all 100% um, all focused on dealer sites. So they said when, it, when a visitor goes to a dealer site, less than 2% of those folks will actually give their name, their phone number, their email address. On the next slide, we, had, we did the, the same type of research at LotLinks. I'm going to try to weave in some of our primary research with the industry research on these setup slides, if you will. And we, we saw the same thing. So we've done a lot of testing in this realm in trying to understand user behavior. And so we created our own, call it a secret shopper test, if you will. And what we, we found is that when we fully optimized in a, a dealer experience to really drive to a lead, the best we could do on desktop was to get 1.4% of people to, to email, another 3% call. Now, I've heard there are dealers out there who might get 5 to 10% of the, the phones to ring, which is fantastic. In our example, though, we, we still found when you take, again, any of those signals that we used to all rely on, it still is the minority of people that give us a signal and so what again Dave and I have worked in is how do we then create a platform to measure the majority of people and understand the signals they give so we can do a better job as an industry of, of understanding uh, a, a user's indication of their interest to buy from us. So in transitioning to the next slide then this um, and again great to see that in the poll 
we're hearing more and more that dealers are indeed interested in sending more traffic to their own sites. On the left-hand side was a Great Wall Street Journal article, and you can see that car dealers in that article were saying that they, they were trying to, to move away from the middlemen. They didn't any longer feel they needed uh, to rely on somebody else to connect them with a the car shopper, that they were ready to digitally handle that relationship. And we, um, we have the privilege of working with a lot of dealers and helping out their Google Analytics. And some of our primary research has shown is that indeed the numbers are growing when we see the number of dealers out there. Uh, more and more their percentage of visits that they're generating are going straight to their site, and more and more they're going straight to their VIN. And the average dealer is generating now a little over 11,000 visits per month across the 400 dealers that we've looked at at an aggregate level. So again, if you're sending more folks to your site, um, we think that this dashboard we're going to release to you will help you better count them and understand what's happening. So on the next slide then, transitioning to the the fact that people shop around. Another key thing that we want to help this industry is under, understand is where are these shoppers coming from? On average, uh, the Google study from 20, I think it was 2014 or 2013, pointed that people use 24 different research touch points in order to shop for a car. And more and more, you know, those touch points can be identified in a Google Analytics platform and give you a better indication of what are the sources of your traffic. And I thought this was an interesting cobalt uh, status as well that within a session, so 75% of car shoppers who go to a manufacturer website will also go to a dealer website in the same 30 minutes. So again, we're seeing a lot of this cross-shopping, this interdependence among these different research touch points. And a lot of this, the, the traffic that you're starting to see from these sources, again, in a dashboard setting can, can be better identified and illuminated. We saw this in our own study, again, this is some primary research from Latlinks, is that when we send a, uh, a, a shopper to a dealer's website, we find that one out of 50 of those visitors will also return to the dealer's site through paid search. So the journey is is they, they go to a third-party site, they click on a dealer listing, they end up on the dealer's vehicle detail page, and eight out of 10 visitors we send to a dealer website will be new to that dealer. So with that, then we see again, they're going to remember that experience. And one out of 50 will seek that dealer out and click on a paid search ad. And three out of 100 on the right-hand side will actually then go look for that dealer through organic search. So that, that fine line of, of you know, a direct correlation is getting harder and harder because of, again, all the, the, the resources used and the dependency on multiple sources. I had one dealer uh, refer to this as the breadcrumbs of the internet, right? They're trying to identify the breadcrumbs and how do you really understand the, the attribution and where the shopper's coming from. So again, another, another point that we're trying to illuminate in the dashboard that, that Dave will show. Transitioning then to the next section on the final uh, uh, journey of what do we know and what's the baseline of the things that we can, we can say are facts in our industry. It's been widely documented that VIN views sell cars. It's quite simple. You know, your VIN is your product. And if 95% of people are shopping using digital devices when they're in market for a car, if you're not online and having your product surfaced and being looked at by car shoppers, it can be pretty hard for you to move that off the lot. And this is the infamous VIN study from 2012 that Cobalt did that really started the conversation of the more VDP views you get, and they optimize, you can see the, the bar chart on the right, they optimized it over 30. They said you can actually um, have a very significant impact on moving your vehicles off the lot by having uh, at least 30 uh, vehicle detail views, v BDP views for that VIN. And you saw that, that uh, if you had under 20, it would take you almost twice as, as long to sell the car. And again, this is product marketing 101. Interestingly, what we saw in our own primary research on the next slide is that, um, in, in actually, this is actually a J.D. Power study. We saw that same correlation. So J.D. Power is starting to analyze this in their own O2O analytics 
platform. You should all be hearing more and more about this platform over coming months as they're developing this. But they uh, came to LotLinks and, and worked with us to understand on the left hand side they looked at new and used car sales and then they looked at how much more likely were people to purchase that car if they were able to look at the, the VDP of it. And what we saw on the new car side is that about 196% increase in propensity to buy if you can actually get to the product page. And on the used car side, a 345% propensity to buy. So it's a little teaser, some more data that will be coming down the pipeline in this industry. And then the final final slide on this, you know, what do we know? Um, what we found in our own studies is that, um, again, the more you can get somebody to, to view a VIN, the more that um, they're likely to buy. So what do we need to know? So why did why, so if, if Dave and I took this journey, we said here are the things we know, and here's we set the stage of the the you know the insights of the industry that led us to well what do we need to know to get to the next level? So this led us to really dig deep and understand what are those KPIs? So what are the signals that people give us when they're on a dealer website that we can now use and aggregate and evaluate to understand propensity to buy? And then how do we value those? Right, so how do, how do we look at a, what's the value of a VDP view versus somebody who fills out your finance form and, and how do they, and I aggregate all those activities that I do to be able to understand if the things that, the traffic that I'm driving to my site are those valuable actions that are going to lead me to an indicator that somebody is, is ready to buy. And then the, the third thing is, how do car shoppers engage on VDPs? I think as an industry, we're just all still starting to learn this, really starting to understand that there are some blind spots and that there's a lot of, of gold in really understanding and digging deep that once you land somebody on your product page, your vehicle detail page, what are the activities that are most interest to them? And then finally, what are the variances among VINs? So if we, we, we started in 2012 um, as an industry understanding that VDP views drive uh, sales velocity, uh, we wanted to start digging deeper. There's more information out there on differences among new versus used makes and models that we'll want to start digging into. So let's quickly, Dave, if you wouldn't mind, we'll quickly go through the things that, that we're, we're trying to investigate and then we'll lead into Dave's section on that, that dashboard and how to evaluate. So uh, again, first and foremost, this is an example of a dashboard from one of our dealer customers in Google Analytics and um, doing a really good job of you know, really understanding what KPIs are important and how to value. So what we've done is we've come up with, again, nine standard as an industry to help us all guide. On the next slide, then, what we've uh, we've also started to dig into is how do car shoppers engage with VIN? So here's an example of a VDP and questions that aren't readily apparent within a, a, a normal install of Google Analytics are how many pictures are viewed? Is the video watched? On, in in do people scroll to the bottom to read the details, right? We, we put all of our specs at the bottom of that page, really important information. And if somebody's down there reading that information, it's pretty important for us to understand because if you're that detailed into wanting to know about all the specs and features and all that other information about a car, really critical that we know that people are scrolling because that's going to give us a better indication of interest and propensity to buy. Did they cross shop? When I feature other vehicles here, are they cross-shopping and looking at my other inventory? Did they click on one of those third-party widgets that took them to another site? And you know, we bring all these up because a lot of these are also GA blind spots that we want uh, the industry to understand that when you send somebody to your vehicle details page and you're looking within Google Analytics, to look at vanity metrics like bounce rate and average session duration simply won't do it any longer. That we really need to understand and we really need to dig in deep with some event tracking on these pages to really get, again, a thorough understanding of what is the level of engagement a car shopper has with my product. All right, next slide please, Dave. And then finally, VIN view variances. It's becoming more and more apparent that what it 
the number of views it takes to sell a new Camaro is very different than, num than the number of VIN views it takes to sell a Chevy Cruze. So in this particular example, we wanted to pull out some more core data that we have from our, our primary database is what we're seeing right now, for example, is 2016 model year cars. There is a, an accelerated uh, velocity over the last few months for those cars when we drive traffic to their VDPs, we reduce days on lot from 22 to 13. Very different pattern than we're seeing for 2014s, 2013s, and this is the, the fastest moving uh, velocity that we're seeing. So again, with this type of data, as we start getting more and more specific, and as you all start to understand at a VIN level, the, the amount of shoppers you send your individual VDPs, you'll be coming up with core strategies to really understand what will it take to move 2016 versus what does it take to move maybe some of your, your um, higher end models versus your youth. So again, starting to tease out here as an industry that it, not every VIN is uniform in what their needs are to move off a lot. So that's my setup for you, Dave. We want to transition now, if that's the, the state of the state, um, we want Dave now will walk through how do, we, how do we frame out all those things we need to know, how do we better understand those signals consumers give us beyond filling out a lead form so that we can do a, a better job as an industry of really identifying core shopper behavior and habits. All right, well, thanks, Denise. And that's, uh, I mean, one of the things that we've seen across the industry the last 10 years, and really especially the last five, is that consumer behavior is changing so quickly. But one of the things that's really exciting about um, how things are changing is that as technology improves, there's more and more data that can help us take immediately actionable steps towards increasing the number of VIN views, the number of people who are performing shopping behavior on the website. So our goal really is to take all of this data that's available now, turn that into information, and then make that information create insight. So we're going to be talking a little bit about how we can uh, look at what's going into the website, to the dealership website, and how we can see true shopping behavior on that website as you're paying for all these different sources that drive traffic in. How do we create more shoppers, more engagement, and ultimately more sales and opportunities? So before jumping into how we're going to do that, let's uh, transition over. And Eliana, would you mind pulling the audience? I would love to pull the audience. All right, audience, this is your second poll question. It's on the screen now. We would love your feedback on this question. The question is, how do you use Google Analytics or other analytics programs to measure and optimize your media mix? Now, we only have four answers for you on the screen, so please select one of these. I don't use analytics at all. I occasionally reference the main dashboard. I use some of the reports, or I rely on analytics to drive my shopper targeting. All right, once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close the poll and share the results. And audience, thank you so much for putting those votes in. We do really, really appreciate it. It really gives us insight into what's happening in the auto industry. So your participation in these poll questions really does make a great difference, and we do really appreciate it. Once the oh, ooh. Big jump in votes. Okay, once again, here's the question. How do you use Google Analytics or other analytics programs to measure and optimize your media mix? I don't use Google Analytics at all. I occasionally reference the main dashboard. I use some of the reports sometimes. I completely rely on analytics to drive my shopper targeting. Once, oh, actually, we already have a majority of the votes in. All right, audience, thank you so much. You guys rock. Let's close this poll. And share, well, Dave, are you ready for the results? I'm ready. All right, here we go. We're going to close this poll and share some results with you. Okay, only 3% of my very savvy audience admit that they don't really use analytics. Only 3%. Now, 21% said that they occasionally reference the main dashboard, but the majority, 47% of today's audience, almost half, said that they do use some of the reports. Now, the remaining 29%, so basically a third, said that they do rely on analytics heavily to drive their shopper targeting. Dave, does that help you out? Is that what you're expecting to yeah. see? 
Yeah, actually, that's that's right on what we've seen really as we've been talking to a number of different dealerships with um, with their analytics is that about half of the audience uh, or half of the dealers are not really using it to its fullest potential, and some of them are starting to get into some of the reporting, but there's a whole lot more to Google Analytics than just the main dashboard. You know, so I have an example up here of what a lot of people think of when they think of Google Analytics, just looking at how many visits come to the site, how many unique visits, and pages per session, average time on site, and bounce rates. And one of the things that happens when you're just looking at this data is you're, you're not looking at all the shoppers on your website. You know, sometimes people look at that bounce rate being a bad thing when it gets higher, but if you're driving people directly to pages that are going to create um, that engagement where they're going to call or they're going to come in, or perhaps if you decrease the total number of pages it takes to get to create that engagement and shopping behavior, that's a good thing. So oftentimes, you know, in this example, we've got 10 pages per session almost, which a lot of people would say is great, um, but maybe it would be even better if uh, we reduce that to six pages per session and we're getting someone more quickly to create that engagement and talk to us and be able to influence them to shop our website. So the way that we can do that is by setting up goals within the Google Analytics. And what are goals? goals? Goals are the different types of behaviors that are performed by the visitors coming to the site that are showing valuable actions, the actions that correlate to sales, people looking at your VDPs, people looking and submitting leads and filling out uh, trade appraisal forms and all sorts of different things that show this traffic is traffic that's shopping your site as opposed to uh, just looking at clicks. So when we set up our goals, we're able to really truly measure shopping behavior and engagement across all of our different traffic sources and look at a lot of the different dimensions across the site to look for opportunities to increase that shopping behavior and take this large growing audience that Denise talked about before that's coming to the website and convert them into true shoppers and true shopping behavior. So we have some goals that we are recommending, nine different goals that show shopping behavior. Now Google Analytics allows you to have up to 20 goals, so this is a great starting point. You may find that there are things that when you look at your sales data, actions on your website that correlate with that, we'd recommend maybe adding to this list. This is a great starting point. Uh, looking at new used and CPO VDP views, setting up goals to measure and track that, how many people are submitting website leads, how many people are clicking the call from the website, who's chatting, who's texting, and how many people are submitting finance leads or, or getting their trade appraisals on the site, and how many of them are looking at incentives and coupons. So at the end of the presentation, actually if you look at your control panel, we actually have some handouts, some white papers on how to set up goals that you may want to uh, take a look at and download and use, but we're going to jump through real quick just how easy it is to set up goals. It's a three-step process. It takes about a minute a goal. So basically when you get into your Google Analytics, and you go to the admin section at the very top, and then you look down to the right-hand corner to under the view where there's goals. You click on that, and it's a simple three-step process. So you're in there, and you click on new goal. And then the very first step of that three-step process, just go down and click on the custom goal setup. All the automotive goals that we're setting up are all going to be custom. So the first step completed. Then the second step is to come up just with what type of, the, what type of goal you're looking for. So in this example, we're just going to put in new BDPs. This is a destination goal. So all the goals we're going to set up are going to be destination goals and event goals. Destinations are things like vehicle detail page views or leads where people are going to a specific URL on the site, whether it's the VDP URL or it's a uh, lead confirmation page that says someone, well, someone did submit a lead. Other events, as Denise alluded to earlier, are some of those third-party plugins that are hidden from Google a little bit outside of when your website provider can set up events or your third-party vendor can set up events for you, you can see how many people are clicking the chat and how many people are filling out the trade appraisal forms or at least clicking into those forms. And from there, we'll be able to, again, measure that true shopping behavior on the site and set, separate that out. Then, then click on the next step, and you're already almost done. So then you fill out the details. In this example, again, for the URL, uh, we'll just say it begins with, and then just type in the beginning sequence of that URL string. So for websites like DealerOn, it would be uh, abcmotors.com and then slash new dash whatever city you're in. And that's how DealerOn sets up all their new VDPs. And every website provider is different, but just fill in the VDP URL. And then we recommend adding a different value for the different types of leads, which we'll talk about in just a second. So we'll put a dollar in here for the VDP views. 
And then the last thing that we always recommend doing is verifying the goal. Make sure that there is a percentage that comes up there that shows that the goal is set up correctly. As long as you have a percentage that looks like it makes sense, uh, then you're ready to create the goal and it's done. So again, it takes about a minute to set up each of these goals. And then when we're looking at these goals, we want to have different goal values because different types of goals have more value to a dealership. Um, there are so many VDP views that happen. It's one of the most highly correlative um, KPIs that correlates to sales. Uh, but, I mean, the dealership would rather have a website lead. It's just so few people are filling those out. So that value's got to be a little bit different. So I'm going to walk through what these different goal value recommendations are and then give, us, give a little bit of rationale as to why we set it up this way. So, again, VDPs, we're going to recommend setting at $1. Website leads and click the call at $20. Uh, for people who are initiating a chat, uh, all we know is that they clicked in and initiated the chat, so we're going to recommend $15 for that. And again, for the finance events and the trade appraisal events, uh, people are just clicking in and starting that, but we can't see all the things they're doing, but we know that they're in there clicking. We're going to recommend $4 on that, and then incentives and coupons, 3 So the rationale behind that is we want to benchmark our VDPs. That's, uh, one of the most highly correlative things uh, with sales and sales behavior. So we've studied a lot of dealerships, and what we see is typically on average, uh, for about every 30 BDPs that um, are visited as people are shopping around your site, that, that equates to about one sale on average. So high, highly correlative, and the reason we didn't benchmark website leads is because, again, some of those statistics that Denise showed earlier, I mean, only about between 1% and 3% of site traffic across all these dealerships that we looked at. Uh, we're converting into an email lead. So if we're using that as our indicator, um, we're missing out on 97 to 99% of the other traffic that's coming to the site. So we're going to benchmark the BDPs as our, as our core $1 metric, and then we're going to look at website leads. You know, still has some good correlation with sales, of course, and we've seen the approximate leads to total sales ratio for website leads is somewhere around 1.5 to 2 leads per sale. So then when we come up with the rest of our measurements, if you take that 30 BDPs that we average and you divide that by 1.5 leads, that gives us a, a great value of $20 for website leads as the value. And what we're really excited about um, with this value is that that's right in line with industry averages for when you're buying leads. If you look at the Auto USAs and the Helixes and the Cars.com New Leads Plus leads you buy, that $20 matches that perfectly. So we feel like there's really strong validation here that we've got some, some pretty good goal value set up that you can differentiate your different types of goals and shopping behaviors. So then we use the same kind of data-driven logic when we come up with a recommendation for chat values. Uh, chats generate leads around 75, or 80, or 75 to 80 percent of the time when people are initiating the chat. So we take that $20 that we came up with as a lead value, multiplied that by 75 percent, that gives us a value of $15 there. And so the same math applies really with the the trade appraisal finance events, um, great leads, great indicators of shopping behavior. And some of the data that we've seen from BlackBook is that 18% of the trade appraisal and credit apps that get initiated become leads. So we know that someone is clicking in and doing a trade appraisal, uh, but we don't know, we, up until this point, we didn't know how many of those people were converting into leads. So again, this information, take that $20 lead value, multiply that by 18%, Gives us, I mean, three dollars and sixty cents. We rounded up to four because the more simple we can make the dashboard, the more immediately actionable we can be. So we have assigned a four-dollar goal value for those. So now we've got a, a pretty good idea about what are the good recommendations for shopping behavior on the site and how do we use that data. But before jumping into the really exciting part, the industry's first ever advertising dashboard. Let's take one more poll question, and I'm going to pass it back to you, Eliana. That sounds great. All right, last poll question for you, audience. Today is on your screen now. We want to know, are you currently using analytics and in-market data to power your SEO and content marketing strategies? Please select one of the following answers. We don't have an SEO and content strategy. We dabble in SEO, but I don't know exactly what we're getting. We are just scratching the surface on using data effectively. Or we always used data when building these strategies. 
Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close the poll and share the results. And wow, those votes are coming in fast. All right, audience, look at that. They are ready, ready, ready. Okay, uh, real fast, we're just going to go and read the question one more time real quick, hoping some uh, more votes come in. Are you currently using anal analytics in and in-market data to power your SEO and content marketing strategies? We don't have an SEO and content strategy. You have a lot of other problems if you don't have SEO or content strategy. We dabble in SEO, but I don't know exactly what we're getting. We're just scratching the surface on using data effectively, or we always use data when building these strategies. Audience, thank you so much for your votes. Dave, Denise, if you're ready, I will close this poll and share the results. Yeah, let's check it out. Let's check it out. All right, here we go. Today's audience says, 6% of them says they admit they don't have an SEO and content strategy. 11% of today's audience say that they dabble in SEO, but they admit they don't know exactly what they're getting. Now, the majority, overwhelming majority, 54%, said they're just scratching the surface on using data effectively. And the remaining 29% said they always use data when building these strategies. That's a lot. That's honestly, I have to say, I, that's a lot more than I thought it would be, 29%. Dave, what do you th think? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's more than I've typically seen out there, so it, it shows we've got a pretty savvy audience. I think most of the people that we talk to are just scratching the surface on what is available out there with all the different data components and truly measuring that shopping behavior, that engagement. So one of the things that often happens, you know, from uh, your you know, your digital agencies or some of your, um, you know, web website providers or paid search companies or people that are given reporting is you're getting over-reported so often. A lot of times you'll get eight, nine, ten pages worth of reporting, driving down everything to the hours and directions page to um, click metrics that could be skewed. And there's so much to look at that you get paralysis by analysis. So one of the things that, um, that Denise and I have been working with Lot Links and Reunion is, is to really um, consolidate a lot of that information and show that true shopping behavior and engagement that we've been able to demonstrate through the different goals that are set up, the types of things that are going to correlate with sales. So we've come up with the industry's first advertising dashboard, and so this is right in your Google Analytics, that objective um, outside resource, and it's, it's really just a, a basically a two-page report, and it's all in one area to show you a whole lot of different pieces. So. Uh, again, if you go to the control panel, there's a handout for how to set this up, and we'll share links to um, how to immediately go and install this in your Google Analytics, but there's a lot of really great data here that's going to show you uh, all the traffic that's coming to your website, how much of that traffic is shopping traffic, how many shoppers are actually coming from all the clicks, because one of the things that happens so often, one of the things I hear the most is, you know, clicks don't sell cars, and that is so absolutely true. It's not it's not the clicks that sell cars, it's the shoppers that are coming on the site that you're influencing, that are, you're creating engagement with, that you're showing why shop with me that's going to really drive the sales. So let's jump into the dashboard. Um, this, this link right here, and it's going to come again at the end of the slide, and again, part of that white paper that's in your control panel there, that you can install this dashboard. All this information is readily available for you to add and start using this dashboard right away, right after the webinar. So basically, when you're logged into your Google Analytics and you, and you click on that link, you'll be able to select a view, select which uh, Google Analytics account you want to add this to, and install the dashboard. And so just like some of the other pieces in Analytics, you can come up with whatever date ranges you want, you can compare with previous periods. Uh, but the part that's the most important here, and the reason why we went through all those different goals and why they're so important, is those goals are the, the shoppers on your site. So when you're in the dashboard, you want to add an additional segment. So if you look at where that arrow is right there at the top of the dashboard, uh, you want to click on Add Segment there, and then it'll take you to this screen here, and I put a star next to Converters because that's really the most, to me, the most important metric on the website is how many shoppers am I getting. So when you add that segment and you, you put the Converters in there and apply that metric, all of a sudden you have a, a very powerful dashboard that shows you a whole lot of data. So we're going to go through similar to how we have nine goals recommended. We also have nine widgets recommended. Um, Google allows you to have up to 12 widgets 
and there's some customization that can happen across this dashboard based on your needs and how different actions across your website are correlating to sales. But let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, when you look at the very top, you look at all sessions, those are all the visitors that are coming to your website, 100% of the traffic coming in. And then just to the right of that, at the converters piece, only about 46% in this example are people who are shopping out of that 100%. So there's a lot of opportunity here to try to figure out why is less than half of my total site traffic turning into shoppers? Why are we, why are we not uh, creating more shoppers? And so the first four widgets within the dashboard are a little bit more high-level statistics. Looking at uh, sessions, your total site visits, in this example, 34,000 visits to the site. But of that, there's only about 16,000 shopping visits to the site. And again, some of the future widgets, the other five that we have that we're going to talk about, are going to deep dive into you know, why is this happening? Why, why is only 46% of the total visits turning into shopping visits? And again, we want to look at unique visits in the next uh, piece, just to the right of that, 24,000 unique visitors. But of those, we only have 9,000 unique shoppers. And then we put in there average time on site and bounce rate. Again, those are two of the two of the metrics that certainly can skew um, decisions if you're looking at it just from a high level, but being two of the most uh, popular metrics to look at, we wanted to include those in there. Again, be careful about trying to always raise your time on site and always decrease your bounce rate because sometimes you want to have a lower time on site if you're driving people to create that engagement more quickly, or if you have a really great strategy about driving people directly to the pages that are going to create that shopping behavior, create those leads, create those opportunities, that's a better thing sometimes. So moving on to the fifth widget in here, we can break down by source all the different visits coming by the source and how many shoppers are coming by the source. So in this example, you can look at your organic traffic and say, yeah, all right, I'm getting about 16,500 visits coming from Google. But then you look down below that and say, well, about, about a little bit less than half of that are actual shoppers coming from Google. So the question starts, you start asking yourself is, all these different sources that are driving traffic, how can I increase the percentage of shoppers out of all the traffic that's coming in? You can look down and see direct traffic and your paid search numbers. You know, a lot of people will be really excited about it, really low cost per click, you know, or even a really great cost per lead. But again, when we look at those lead metrics, and if we're only looking at lead metrics, we're discounting 95% um, of the total traffic on that website. So maybe start looking at this in a little different way where you're, you're looking at what's your cost per shopper. So we have in this example 3,500 visits coming from paid search, but only 1,500 of those visits are shoppers coming from paid search. So then you can start asking questions. This is a great tool to empower dealerships to really hold their vendors accountable, their digital agencies accountable, their internal team accountable to produce more shoppers with all this money and effort we're spending on driving people to the dealership website. And the next widget on here is just because of the high volume of EDPs and how correlative they are with um, increasing your total sales and the more people looking at your inventory, of course, the more people looking, the, the more likely you are to sell more cars. So again, by source, just like that last slide, how many used VDPs, how many new VDPs are coming from each of the different sources. And again, another way to hold your vendors accountable. So then on this seventh widget on here, it's, it's a widget that shows device type and all your total traffic that's coming in, a breakdown between your desktop, your mobile, your tablet. You want these to look very similar between your total visits and your shoppers below. When there's a difference there, you know, and a lot of times I see, you know, as an example for dealerships that don't have a responsive website, um, that the desktop percentage of shoppers is so much higher. So, I mean, Eliana, you'd probably recommend going Chameleon here, a really great responsive <laughs> platform. But you, you want these numbers to be very, very consistent. Otherwise, there is a problem in, in your conversion into shoppers across desktop, mobile, or tablet. So again, really great information all in one dashboard to show you a lot of different opportunities to increase your shop account. And again, for your content and um, your paid search strategies, if you're going after different cities, the eighth widget here shows how many visits are coming in by city and how many shoppers are coming in by city. So again, I mean, there's, there's different areas to edit these pieces. You can have up to eight different cities on some of those uh, previous slides. You can have up to 10 different sources coming in. So there's some customization. Um, but 
if you see a whole lot of traffic coming in from a city that you're trying to go after and, and drive more sales to, but the shoppers aren't there, then there's a problem with that strategy. You can adjust and very quickly from a, from a high level view see that there's opportunity to increase your effectiveness in that strategy. And then the final slide is looking at the top pages that are viewed on your website. And you're looking at page views here and, and the percentage of people that are exiting those pages, uh, total page views versus the page views that were uh, looked at by the shoppers on your site. So, you know, a lot of times we'll see things where someone's driving 6,000 different page views to a page and it's really exciting and we've got 6,000 page views. But when you break it down and you look at shoppers, it's, you know, gosh, we only have 400 shoppers at a 6,000 page views. Great opportunity to optimize that page. Maybe there's a really high exit rate and they're leaving before they're shopping. How do we drive them into the areas where they're going to be shopping our site, submitting leads, driving more traffic to the dealership? And, you know, sometimes even if you get a whole lot of page views, it may be worth actually eliminating because you're driving them to a page that's not creating that shopping behavior. So, again, nine widgets that give a really, really, really good overview of how your website's performing, how much shopping behavior, how much engagement you're getting from your shoppers. So one of the things that's really great too about all the dashboards in Google Analytics and this advertising dashboard is that you can email a report. I mean, dealerships, of course, would get busy. There's a whole lot of things going on. This way you can stay on top of this report and see these things um, at whatever frequency you'd like. So just uh, at the very top of the dashboard, click on email, put in your email address, uh, subject advertising dashboard, and you can pick the frequency, whether you want it daily or weekly or which day of the week, how long you want it to be active for, and then you're ready to send that dashboard, and then you're going to get that report in your email at, at the frequency that you've chosen, so that way you can regularly stay on top of how much shopping I'm getting on my website and um, how, how much engagement and how am I performing and what can I do to increase those efficiencies. So some of the action items that, that we want to talk about today, we want to make sure that we're, we're keeping in, turn, in tune with, with how views help sell cars. Again, uh, consumer behavior is changing so much. This is one of the most highly correlative things that can really push the envelope. More, more people looking at your inventory, of course, you're going to sell more cars when you have more people looking at your cars. Um, and then turn that conversation from just measuring shopping behavior, um, or not measuring clicks, but, but measuring shopping behavior and engagement and taking, taking that conversation away from some of those other KPIs that can, that can be dangerous to look at, your, your cost per click, your bounce rate, your time on site. Let's measure shopping behavior, engagement, and what are the things that are going to increase your sales and opportunities. And then let's set up the goal tracking. Let's be sure that we, we have goal values set up so that we know and can hold, again, our vendors. Uh, our agencies, our internal team accountable for the results and what we're doing with all the, the money and investment we're spending to drive people to the website. And adopt the advertising dashboard. It's, it's a one-stop shop. Uh, it's not 10, 20 pages where you're going to have that, again, that paralysis by analysis. It's, it's two pages basically worth of information that's high level and shows immediately what's going on on your website across all these different areas for opportunity for growth. And then set up those automated emails for the dashboard so you can get those regularly. So some of the resources we have available, again, um, we have in the control panel these um, uh, how to set up your goals in Google Analytics, how to set up your bin advertising dashboard right with the webinar. So you can download those and install those. And when you click on that link, it will take you right to, as long as you're logged into your Google Analytics, Click on, uh, click on the link that's in those white papers and you'll be able to immediately install this into your dashboard and start using it right away to, to um, you know, measure your shopping behavior, compare that with your traffic, and again, make sure the goals are set up first and then the dashboard is powered and you're ready to go. So with that, Eliana, I'm going to pass this back to you. Thank you for hosting. I know you're the best in the biz, so <laughs> we appreciate you having us on there to share this, this great information. You're very kind, and you guys did wonderfully. We have a ton of great questions from the audience, which we are going to get to in just a little bit. I just want to make sure, audience, that you understand the handouts section. There's two PDFs in there, um, the one for the advertising dashboard and the other one on how to make your Google and set up the goals in Google Analytics, plus the slide deck that you just saw is also a PDF in there. So there's three handouts in the handouts section of the GoToWebinar uh, interface. So take your time, but hurry up, <laughs> download all three of those things, okay? And um, we have some uh, great awesomeness to get to. 
Uh, we're going to get to your questions in just a minute. But before we do that, oh, yeah, I know you've been waiting for it. I hope you guys are paying attention. It's that time. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, I announced that our good friends at Lotlinks and Reunion Marketing, they are giving away a tremendous prize today on the webinar. One of you lucky webinar attendees, you're going to win three months of a lot links campaign, which is going to bring you a fresh 1500 shoppers directly to your dealership website, VDPs. This, uh, if that wasn't enough, you're also gonna get a $100 Amazon gift card on top of that. This prize is valued at over $6,000. Awesome, incredible, tremendous, fabulous prize for not just you, but also for your dealership. You're gonna wanna win this. All you have to do is answer a simple question about the presentation that you just saw. So uh, what I want you to do is get ready, get to your keyboards, get those fingers all nimbled up and ready. First one to write in a correct response to the giveaway question is going to be walking away with this cool prize today. I want to wish everyone good luck. Vendors, as you could probably tell, this prize really isn't geared towards you. It really is intended for dealership personnel only. We do appreciate you, though, and we thank you so much for being here today. But we're going to ask you to please sit this out and let a very deserving dealership win this prize. All right? All right, here we go, everyone. Good luck. It's not a, a, an easy lay down question. You had to be paying attention to this one. And hint is it's a two part answer. All right. Here's your question. Good luck. How many goals and how many widgets make up the Vinvertising dashboard? Wow. I love it. I love it. Okay. I just want you to say I had predicted a certain person was going to win this prize today because I know he's super, super fast at typing. Uh, I was wrong. You were the second person to write in the response. Uh, the first person to write in the response was Simon Reno. Simon Reno, you are the winner. Yes. Nine goals and nine widgets. Congratulations, Simon Reno writing down your name, making it official. Simon Reno, congratulations. You are a winner on the Dealer On webinar series, and you won yourself a great prize today. You're going to be hearing directly from our friends over at Lotlinks and Reunion Marketing about claiming both of your prizes. Congratulations, and we hope to see you on another Dealer On webinar soon. Of course, thank you for everyone for playing along. Congratulations to Simon Reno. Of course, we got to thank our good friends over at Lotlinks and Reunion Marketing for their incredible generosity. That was awesome. Great job. And by the way, you people did really good on the answers, too. Almost everyone got them right. So thank you so much. All right, here we go, everyone. Uh, we got some great questions to get to. Denise, are you ready? I am here. All right, good. Ready. And Dave, you're ready? <laughs> Ready for it. All right, all right. Um, okay, so this question came in kind of early, and I actually don't know the answer to this question. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it out there because I don't know how this is done. Joshua wrote in, he says, Will dealer on be setting up the Vinvertising dashboard automatically in the Google Analytics on the back end of the websites? And I actually don't know the answer to that, and I didn't know if if either one of you knew the answer to it. Or the dealership has to actually set that up. Sure. If you uh, are a Lotlinks customer, we'll do that work for you within Google Analytics. So we have everyone at Lotlinks is Google Analytics certified. So if you are one of our customers, we will absolutely do that for you. I'm certain, Dave, if they're a reunion marketing customer, your team will do that work for them as well, correct? That's correct. I love it. All right, Joshua, we got lots of people who are going to help you out with that. Okay, thank you so much for the great question. Um, next question comes to you from Kim. Kim says, since we have, since we can have twenty different goals, are there any others we may want to add? Yeah, and and that's something that I mean, there's there's a lot of flexibility that Google has at allowing the twenty different goals, and. Um, if there are things that are happening on your website that are correlating with sales, we would definitely recommend increasing that goal measurement and goal count. Some people have a whole lot of content about their service um, marketing, for instance. You know, most dealerships have two or three pages per service, but you know, some people are looking at, at the data and 
creating pages specific to a lot of the different service pieces. So if you have strategies like that, you may want to make service a goal. You may want to look at uh, people that are looking at videos because they're so highly influential if you've got a really great video strategy. Uh, people that are carouseling through your different inventory, perhaps on um, search result pages or vehicle detail pages. So really the, the, the key to setting up those goals is to look at uh, how many, first you start tracking, seeing what's going on on the site, and then if there's a correlation between sales, those are definitely the kind of things you want to set up as goals because, again, that's going to give you an even better perspective on shopping behavior on the website. Awesome. Great, great question, Kim. If you have another follow-up question, please let us know. All right, your next question. Actually, we have a lot coming in from uh, Mike. Mike wrote in, when looking at the dealership Google Analytics, how do you incorporate third-party Google Analytics, for instance, cars.com, Auto Trader, et cetera, with ours? For, for those things, I mean, you're going to want to look at your data across the, what's happening on the cars.com and Auto Trader site, uh, kind of a standalone, along with the traffic that's being driven to the website, too. Um, there is uh, much fewer traffic pieces that are coming to the website from those third-party sites. Most of the um, engagement that's going on with your vehicle that's happening on that site, so if you actually compare most of the time the amount of traffic that's going directly to your site from those, those third-party sites, it's not, it's not a very high number. Um, the, the dashboard or your traffic sources page will be able to show you uh, exactly how many clicks you're getting, but most I would say most of the value on those sites is what's occurring on the cars.com and on the auto trader sites and, and looking at the KPIs that they have in that recording. Okay, Mike Mike shot back two follow-up questions, just so you know, okay? Um, <laughs> his first follow-up question is, what if you have a frame-in service appointment software? Can you set Google Analytics on that? And how do you divide their Google Analytics from yours? So with those, there, there's a lot of, you know, and Denise touched on this a little bit during her part of the presentation, there's a lot of blind spots that happen. So if it's a third-party plug-in, like an X-Time or um, you know, any kind of service scheduler that's not on your site, you can set up event tracking. And actually, Dealeron is, is really great about setting up event tracking for different pieces on the website, along with a few other providers. But you can see how many people are actually clicking into that third-party plugin. But that's all you can really tell is how many people are clicking in there. Hmm. So, what I typically like to, or what we what we like to recommend, one is you know as an industry we want to be moving towards more transparency from these kind of things. But you can ask your vendor, you know, what is the percentage of people that are clicking in and starting that process, and how many of them are turning into an actual lead? And once you have that data, you can kind of work backwards to come up with the different value. But the actual action of just clicking in there. It's something that would be a great thing to set up as a goal because then you know how many people are clicking within it. But once they're in there, there's nothing the analytics is going to be able to show just because it's a it's a Google blind spot. Okay, um, Mike said he has X time. Does that help? Your does that? Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. He said Mike said perfect. Thank you so much. All right. We have uh, some more coming up from Mike in just a bit. But before that. I wanted to get to this uh, comment from David. He says, I really appreciate that Dave is explaining why they chose the values that they, did, that they did. This can be a little difficult to determine. So he just wanted to let you know that. Thank you so much, Dave. Okay, um, uh, okay so back to Mike. He said, should the goal be VDPs or do you have to type it out as vehicle details page? Um, I mean, that, that's more of a preference thing, whichever one, uh, whichever one you're going to want to put in there. I like to often shorten it just because um, it'll add an extra line or potentially an extra layer of, of space on the report just because I like things short and simple and sweet. But it's really, that's just a preference thing for whatever you think is going to look best. Oh, okay. Mike, I hope that helps you out. <laughs> um, Mike also made another observation uh, while you were speaking. He said, just because dealerships use a metric, it doesn't mean that we are correct with what we are reading. Now, that brings up a really great point. Denise, Dave, um, do you know 
uh, industry-wide, how many dealers are actually using the analytics that they see correctly, or is it is it a really big problem in our industry that people are misreading their analytics and maybe doing more harm than good? Did you want to take that one? Or? Yeah, I can take that one. So each customer, when we onboard them, we actually work with them on setting up analytics, as I mentioned before. One of the, the first things we do is we audit their implementation of analytics, and about 80% of the time, we notice analytics is installed incorrectly, and not all the data is flowing. So Mike brings up a really important point for our industry. We've all taken for granted that Google Analytics, because it's a, an out-of-the-box solution, that if we plug it in, it's just going to magically work. So maybe one of the things we could follow up to, um, Mike, you specifically, or anybody else, there are some diagnostic tools out there that are, are free of charge to use, so you can first and foremost understand if your analytics is set up properly. One of the biggest issues we tend to see is mobile, that sometimes the coding just isn't carried over to the mobile experience. So again, we can send some follow-up on what are some of the diagnostic tools we use, and if there are any folks on the phone who want to tap into my team's knowledge, we'd be more than happy to have you talk to some folks on our team who on a daily basis, again, look across dealer accounts to, to find those potential issues. Ah, very cool. All right, Mike, if I were you, I would totally take her up on that. Um, uh, Oh, okay. Oh, he wrote back, yes, please, Denise. I would like that very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. Okay, well, as you can see, contact information for both Denise and Dave are right in front of you on the screen. Make sure you take down their contact information. Seriously, like the best people in the industry right here. Seriously, <laughs> you're not going to want to pass up that opportunity, okay? All right, next question comes in uh, from Anthony. He says, what data have you found, if any, with Facebook conversions to the dealer website? I've seen huge increase in time on site. I don't know if either of you have that information. Denise, Dave? It, it, it is all over the map. I mean, there are so many different Facebook strategies um, that could skew and change this information. So, you know, one of the strategies where people are just looking for engagement and frequency of message and stay in front of an audience, you know, you're, you're not going to have the same kind of engagement as, you know, perhaps a more targeted, boosted promotion strategy where you're driving people directly to pages with the end goal in mind to be to create shopping behavior. So it's going to, it's going to vary significantly across dealerships just because of the, of how different social media is used across, um, you know, all different dealerships. Uh, one of the things that, that um, that we always like to promote is, is to use Facebook and use all the data and demographic targeting that's possible just to drive people to pages that are going to create shopping behavior and look at the metrics and adjust and change your strategies based on what's actually happening on the site. Uh, but you, you'd be surprised at just how much that varies across dealership by dealership. It is a hard thing to, to come up with a true average because there's such a, a huge standard deviation between what's, what's actually happening from a, from the different uh, ways to go about it, Facebook and social media. Okay, all right, thank you. That was a great question. Um, thank you, Anthony. If you have a follow-up question, please don't hesitate to let us know. I know we're over time, but we have another handful of really great questions, so please stick around, and we'll be closing up the webinar pretty soon, okay? Um, next question comes to you from Mike again. Hey, Mike. He says, any thoughts on using Bing search since Apple iOS and Siri both use Bing as the default? Denise, Dave, that comes from Mike. So can, can you repeat that question again one more time? Do you have any thoughts on using Bing search since both Apple iOS and Siri use Bing as their default? Yeah, so so we've seen a pretty, a pretty significant increase in Bing traffic. It's still, Google's still the, I mean, 10 or you know, 5,000 pound gorilla monster monster search engine that's driving traffic. Uh, we, we do recommend using Google Analytics just because that's going to be objective and unbiased and it's going to show all the Bing traffic that's coming in and you can still measure 
your Bing traffic, how it converts, um, you know, how it's turning into shopping behavior, and the same kind of metrics here. So Google Analytics is just a good tool that's it's owned by Google, but it's a pretty objective tool. Mm -hmm. The things with Bing to, to recommend is, you know, set up your, your Bing Webmaster tools just like Google. Use that to, you know, help measure and look for opportunities to fix the site architecture. Make sure that your site map is submitted to Bing. Um, it, things are going to change, I, I think, quite a bit over the next couple of years just because of the, the major changes that have happened with Spotlight. But that's it's something to keep an eye on. But the Google data is going to still tell you what's going on with your Bing traffic. So your, your, your analytics is still a pretty safe, safe way to measure that, but I would expect and continue to expect an increase in total Bing traffic coming to dealership websites. Okay, um, Mike actually wrote in to clarify, he was specifically asking if you thought SEM on Bing was worthwhile. Um, and, and there's a large audience of people using Bing um, so I would I would again just look at your look at your analytics. I think that because there are people in there and they are searching and you know for the products and and, and things that you're selling, that it's worth going in and and seeing the results and let the results you know what's your cost per shopper coming from Bing? How does that relate to Google? Um, you know I, I think that really I mean paid search in general is low hanging fruit for a lot of dealerships because there are people typing in the specific things that you're selling. The big thing is if you're if you're buying on Google or Bing, let's see how many people are, are becoming shoppers from that. Let's measure that. Let's standardize that. Let's like, let's compare that with our organic SEO right. you know, and, and other strategies and drivers to the site. So the data is going to tell you a whole lot about that, but it's definitely worth considering, and uh, and I, I would recommend doing it myself. All right. All right. Can I add something there, Eliana? So what I love about those last few questions is, you know, we as an industry are starting to think and look at different opportunities for driving traffic to dealership sites, right? And that's the whole point of this dashboard. So, uh, you know, we, we do see now some of the most innovative dealers in this space are indeed deploying a, a Facebook and a Bing strategy, and they are using that deeper level data in a dashboard setting that Dave just released in order to understand at, you know, that engagement and, and a lot of the real quality metrics. So um, definitely those are great questions in our point of view from, again, we look at hundreds and hundreds of Google Analytica, Analytics accounts on a daily basis is um, you can find a lot of gold in those new types of of uh, tactics and just make sure you're not looking at that vanity metric surface level data because the differences in each platform will surprise you so you'll need to optimize for each of those platforms. Ah, okay. Oh, that's a good point. All right, great. Okay, um, we still have questions coming in, believe it or not. So uh, let's get to some more. Uh, next question comes to you from Bruce. He says, we just installed the latest tag manager tool. Should we delete the old tag manager code? I don't know who to send this to. Which one should I send this to? Dave? Denise? <laughs> this is from Bruce. Um, I mean, I like to keep my, my HTML um, relatively simple. And if you're not using the old Google Tag Manager and, and you have the new one, I would just I would recommend to um, clean things up. One of the things that I see happen a lot of times is people update to new plugins or um, add different things in their code is that what ends up happening is their code is just full of a whole lot of old, expired, or things that are not being used types of, of pieces. So anytime you change a vendor, a plugin, or um, provide anything new, I, I think it's worth going in there and cleaning everything up so you can have it simplified. Otherwise, you know, you could run into some problems later. Okay. I agree with that, Bruce. Good luck. Okay, next question comes to you from Todd. Actually, we have a couple of questions that came in about um, the, the dashboard, I think. So this one comes in from Todd. He says, how easy is it to customize the dashboard? Yeah, that's, that's one of the, the most exciting pieces about the dashboard, really, is that um, there's a lot of customization you can do kind of based on what's happening at your dealership or at your dealership group. So, you know, we have nine recommended widgets to start off with it. You can have up to 12. You can add three more maybe. Um, and I'd recommend having your AdWords integrated with your analytics uh, just for, for even more data, but maybe 
you want to get some AdWords widgets in there that are going to show shopping behavior, or um, maybe you want to look at, you know, remove the, the bounce rate one, which can be such a um, such a misleading metric, and uh, replace that with with a different one that works for you. But you can there, there's literally thousands of different widgets that you can put in there. This is a, a nice simple starting point, but you know the more that you get into the data and you see what's happening on your site, there's a lot of different things you can put in there to, to really show the shopping behavior. So we have a set. Excellent. Uh, we're going to have uh, another question from David in our last few questions that we have. But this is a great question too. This one came in from a different Mike. Hey Mike, how you doing? Um, he says, does this mean that ROI bot would be a duplicate system? Uh, ROI bot, of course, is from PCG, so I didn't know the answer to that either. Dave, I, I can oh, I buy. That for. Oh, okay. go ahead, Dave. Next. Oh, go oh, for it, Dave. I was going to say we uh, have a large number of our customers that use that tool as well as a complementary tool, and I think it does a really good job as well of providing top-level results. So indeed, it can be a complementary tool. And, and Dave, I don't, I don't know uh, your experience with that. I'll flip it to you now. Yeah, no, I was going to say the exact same thing, Denise, so right on the same page. Excellent. Mike, thank you for the great question. Okay, next question comes to you from David. He says, so I went into my Google Analytics account, and I'm trying to figure out what the converters segment is getting its, in, is getting its info. I guess where the converter segment is getting its info. What info does the converters segment take into account? Yeah, so the converter segment is basically uh, the people that have accomplished the goals that you have set up. So that's that's where setting up those goals that, that we've recommended and potentially adding more if you find other things that correlate with your, your sales um, that show shopping behavior. Anyone who accomplished or completed a goal is going to be a converter. And so that's where when you couple that with, with the dashboard, you're going to be able to look and see how many people are shoppers based on all those goals that we set up before. He wrote in. Perfect. Thanks. All right. Um, uh, Aaron's going to put you guys on the spot. Aaron says, do you have any updated stats on SEO values driven from handwritten vehicle descriptions? Now, this is funny because I've done a few webinars where they the presenters have really, really encouraged you know, unique content for those vehicle descriptions. And it does take a lot of time. So obviously Aaron wants to know if it's really valuable. Is there SEO value in any of that? Do we have any stats to back that up? Denise, Dave? I, I don't say that, I wouldn't say that I have any, any stats that I could just come to right on the spot, but I do know that uh, when you're using the same content and you're writing the same exact thing that someone else is using. Google's already, you know, likely crawled their site or looked at that page and have already assigned a level of relevance for that. So a, a lot of times, a lot of a lot of dealership sites or a lot of BDPs or lease pages or CPO pages or you know any kind of customized content that um, one site has, maybe from a manufacturer page there are another 300, 400, 500 pages that have the same thing. So you're going to have lower page authority and you're going to be less likely, far less likely to actually rank organically uh, for those things. And so you're not going to get a whole lot of visibility to those kind of pages. So if you're writing custom, unique content, you know, the best thing to do is look at what is your local market searching for, write content around those things and then look at the traffic coming in, making sure that it's converting, you know, using those, uh, those converters and engagers to the site. But it's a, it's a really good idea to not uh, use content that is, um, that is duplicate because you're, you're likely not going to be seen with pages where you're doing that. I love it. Okay, Aaron, thank you so much for the question. Okay, last couple of questions. Uh, they're actually about the same thing, so I'm going to read them both. All right. David wrote in that he actually took a Google Analytics course through somebody, and now he feels that he uses Google Analytics pretty good, and he would definitely recommend it if someone's wanting more training. And David, I would have to say, you're probably definitely a leg up over the average person who uses Google Analytics, because a lot of people don't take any kind of Google Analytics training, which leads me to my question from Andy. He says, 
I obviously need help. How can I learn more about Google Analytics? Dave, Denise? Denise, can you take this one? Or? Sure, absolutely. So uh, the Google Analytics team has done a fabulous job of creating a lot of content and even um, online tests that you can take to test your knowledge and become certified. So if you simply Google, you know, Google Analytics certification, there will be a plethora of resources there. Secondly, I would say YouTube. The Google Analytics team also has a large number of videos on YouTube and a channel to help talk about uh, topical elements of Google Analytics, everything from how to install to how to read reports. And then the final resource that I would recommend is Brian Pash of PCG Media. is quite the guru in Google Analytics himself, and he has taken a lot of Google Analytics content and customized it for all of us in the industry. Um, when we hire new hires at Lotlinks, for example, we, we have them all go through Brian Pash's training as well because he'll take, again, the Google Analytics data and contextualize it for us in our unique industry. So those would be my three resources. Ah, now that definitely struck a chord. We have a number of people who wrote in that they agree with you on PCG does have a great course on Google Analytics. And actually Dave, the one who said he took that Google Analytics course, he said he took that course and he, it really, really helped him. So audience, I hope that helps you out. And with that, that is the end of our question and answer session. And Denise and Dave, you slayed it. Thank you so much for being here today. That was a fantastic presentation. Thank, thank you, you Eliana. for attending and thanks, Eliana. I can't wait to webinar with you guys again. I want to remind the audience. Did you see how I did that? I already like put you on the on notice. Okay, I want to remind the audience <laughs> that a link to download a copy of this webinar recording is going to be emailed to you a little bit later today for your reference. And hey, feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Today's webinar is also going to be posted online within 24 hours. Just go to dealeron.com slash webinars. And from there, you can view our upcoming webinar schedule or access any of our past webinars too. And hey, this webinar is going to conclude in just another minute. And when it does, you're going to receive a short survey. It's literally six short questions, okay? We really would love it if you'd fill it out. We're always looking for your feedback, and we want to know what you thought about today's presentation, your honest feedback, okay? Today, we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all those completed surveys to also win some Google Prizes. And invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next webinar, How to Be a Merchandising Master in Eight Steps. Top performing dealers across the country know that the key to bridging the gap between their dealerships and car shoppers simply comes down to optimizing the car shopper experience. However, providing a better car buying encounter takes superior online merchandising, and that doesn't simply happen overnight. There's a lot of science behind it. Are you a master of your merchandising domain? In this one-hour webinar, Devin Daly is going to lead us on the path to merchandising mastery. Attendees of this fast-paced one-hour presentation will learn cost-effective platforms, technology tools, and best practices used by the top 100 digital dealers that consistently drive lead submissions, conversions, and revenue. You'll also learn important third-party research that uncovers the online car shopping experiences of various demographic groups so you can make informed decisions about pricing and merchandising. And you're going to learn empirical third-party data that identifies car shopper obstacles so dealer managers can eliminate those barriers and help car shoppers reach the purchase finish line quicker. You're also going to see the latest trends to help set your store apart and start winning the sale online. There's no doubt about it. If you're ready to learn how to be a merchandising master in just eight steps, then this is a presentation you can't afford to miss. So register now. And don't forget, Dilleron's weekly webinars are held Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. You got any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics? Contact me directly. I'd love to hear from you. My name is Eliana Raggio. I'm on all the automotive social networks, or you can email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today, and I hope to see you all on another webinar in DealerOn's continuing education series. Take care.